Dear friends, on October 4, 2023, Pope Francis published a new apostolic exhortation, Laudate Deum, and it completes the encyclical Laudato Si, which he published in May 2015. Let us look, uh, as, let us make a short summary of this apostolic exhortation. Pope Francis himself explains the title of the letter in the concluding paragraph of the Apostolic Assortation. Praise God is the title of this letter. Laudate Deum means praise God. For when human beings claim to take God's place, they become their own worst enemies. Eight years after Laudato Si and based on the reflections and events of this time, the Pope reiterates and further develops the themes from his second encyclical in which he expressed his heartfelt concerns about the care of our common home. A decision taken because he says, I have realized that our response have not been adequate while the world in which we live is collapsing and may be nearing the breaking point. He also adds that it is indubitable that the impact of climate change will increasingly prejudice the lives and families of many persons. We will feel its effects in the areas of health care, sources of employ- employment, access to resources, housing, forced migrations, and so on. The Pope does not fail to repeatedly emphasize how the poor and the most vulnerable suffer most from the consequences of climate change, even though they are less responsible for it. How can we forget that Africa home to more than half of the world's poorest people, is responsible for a minimal portion of historic emissions, he asks. In the six chapters and the 73 paragraphs of Laudate Devum, Pope Francis calls all of us, and especially those in power, to co-responsibility and to act before it is too late. The Pope emphatically reiterates that it is no longer possible to doubt the human anthropic or the origin of climate change and observes an advancement of the technocratic paradigm that he already mentioned in Laudato Si, which consists in thinking as if reality Goodness and truth automatically flow from technological and economic power as such. Faced with such a situation, Pope Francis emphasizes the weakness of international politics, calling for a reconfiguration of multilateralism, including a multilateralism from below, and not simply one determined by the lights of power. The demands that rise up from below throughout the world where activists from very different countries help and support one another can end up pressing the sources of power. The Pope adds that unless citizens control political power, national, regional and municipal, it will not be possible to control damage to the environment. Referring to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Pope also says that it is regrettable that global crises are being squandered when they could be the occasions to bring about beneficial changes. The Pope dedicates a chapter to the climate conferences without hiding that there were poor results in some cases. He cites For example, the disappointment of COP25 in Madrid, but also highlights some progress, 
such as the step forward achieved at COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh in consolidating a system of, for financing loss and damage in countries most affected by climate disasters. Today, he says, there is need for new mechanisms because the courts have been poorly implemented due to lack of suitable mechanism for oversight, periodic review and penalties in cases of non-compliance. In the fifth chapter, he focused on COP28. Pope Francis believes this conference may represent a change of direction, showing that everything done since 1992 was in fact serious and worth the effort, or else it will be great disappointment and jeopardize whatever good has been achieved thus far. He adds, we must move beyond the mentality of appearing to be concerned but not having the courage needed to produce substantial changes. In the final chapter, the Pope reminds the Catholic faithful of the motivation born of their faith. I encourage my brothers and sisters of other religions to do the same, since we know that authentic faith not only gives strength to the human heart, but also transforms life, transfigures our goals, and sheds light on our relationship to others and with creation as a whole. So Pope Francis concludes by recalling that emissions per individual in the United States are about two times greater than those of individuals living in China and about seven times greater than the average of the poorest countries. We can state that a broad change in the irresponsible lifestyle connected with the Western model would have a significant long-term impact. As a result, along with indispensable political decisions, we would be making progress along the way to genuine care for one another. Thank you for listening.